Good morning, and welcome to Bill 2018. Welcome to Seattle. It's fantastic to see you all back here. We're focused on two massive platform opportunities. One, Microsoft Azure, the other, Microsoft 365. You know, we've had something like 130 new capabilities that we have shipped in just the last year in Azure. The pace of innovation is pretty stunning. In fact, there is 70 of them that are going to be launched just at the Build conference. And today, I'm really pleased to announce that we're going to open source the Azure IoT Edge so that developers can extend it and contribute to it and take it to all the places that it's needed in. And today, I'm really thrilled to announce a new partnership with Qualcomm, who's going to bring a new Qualcomm accelerated camera for scenarios from home security to industrial safety, this, and, and releasing a computer vision toolkit with it. So you can, in fact, run a container that's been trained in the cloud and deployed right on the camera for computer vision. And this is going to be available by end of the year for developers to deploy. I'm also thrilled to announce a partnership with DJI, a leader in civilian drones and aerial imagery. DJI is doing two things. One is they're launching an SDK on Windows 10, so developers building commercial apps for a variety of different vertical industries now will have full access to the drone, both the data as well as the flight plan, so you can imagine what you can do in agriculture, industrial safety. Many of these applications can get written on Windows as the control plane for the autonomous drone. And we are also integrating Azure IoT Edge right into the drone itself. So again, you can deploy, compute AI models that have been trained in the cloud to the edge right on the drone. Azure IoT Edge enables Azure services as well as your own code to escape the cloud and be deployed directly down onto devices and managed remotely, all on devices smaller than a Raspberry Pi or as large and capable as the solution calls for. Now, in this dashboard, I have two alerts. One is inside the building, and the other is up on the roof. Let's take a look at the one inside the building first. And when I click on it, I see the image of an anomaly that was captured. Now, this anomaly was detected by a camera produced by Qualcomm in partnership with Microsoft. It has rich compute and AI capabilities, and it runs Azure IoT Edge. Now, to power this, we've used Azure Machine Learning as to build an AI model and packaged it up in a Docker container and then deployed it to this camera. Because we, we're using this technique, we can deploy it to millions of these in minutes. Now, our AI model detected a stress fracture. And if left untreated, it can be very dangerous. So I'm going to create a ticket in Dynamics 365 to dispatch a technician. Great. So back on our dashboard, the second alert is a pressure drop in a pipe up on the roof. Now, as you can see, we're detecting that anomaly in real time. For the first time ever, we're able to stream video back from that drone to this laptop running IoT Edge in our AI model, which was developed in the cloud. Now, if you're eager to try this out, DJI is offering an early release of the Windows SDK exclusively to build attendees. Stop by their booth, check it out, and try it for yourself. I'm really thrilled to announce a speech SD, device SDK, as well as reference kits that Rubo, which is one of our OEM partners, and ODM partners out of China, has built. This is a microarray speaker that you can take and deploy in any device. Many industrial applications now get built by recognizing ambient noise and signatures. And so these are devices 
that can be built by developers for even low volume scenarios in the enterprise market as well as consumer uh, applications. Since Kinect, we've made a tremendous amount of progress when it comes to some of the foundational technologies in HoloLens. And so we are taking that, those advances and packaging them up as Project Kinect for Azure. And this Project Kinect for Azure is going to have some of the best spatial understanding, skeletal tracking, object recognition, and package some of the most powerful sensors together. And at this conference, we're launching 100 plus new features for the bot framework so that you can continue to build these conversational interfaces. And give them more of the customization. So for example, you can have a custom wake word. You can give it custom speech. You can even give it custom personality. Take some of the FAQs and turn them into Q&As. And then take the corpus of data you have in terms of conversations and use that as labeled data to have a full dialogue system. We also have the capability to be able to take the applications you build and then have them show up in all channels and personal digital assistance. So having done all the hard work of having built one conversational interface, you want to have the maximum reach as a developer. So that means you should be able to publish it in Cortana, you should be able to publish it in Skype, in Facebook, and we have now 16 plus channels by just simply registering the channel, tagging the intents, you can have your conversational interface show up everywhere. And talking about AI infrastructure, I'm really thrilled to announce the preview of Project Brainwave. Project Brainwave is a distributed real-time AI fabric that today is working with FPGAs from Intel to bring the best-in-class real-time AI, low-latency AI capabilities and inferencing capabilities. It has 5x lower hardware latency than TPU for real-time AI. And this is going to be available in preview for developers. And we're also going to extend it all the way to the edge. We're working with our system partners to take FPGA and make it available wherever Azure is available. And so we've been working with our friends across the lake at Amazon to really bring Alexa and Cortana together to benefit every user and every developer out there. Alexa, open Cortana. Cortana here, how can I help? How's my day? I'll take a look. I see two events for today. First up, at 5.30 p.m., celebration with Tom at Harvest Vine. And then, at 8 p.m., pick up Maddie from soccer. What can I do for you? Send an email to Tom Taylor saying, I'll see you tonight. Sure, I'll email Tom Taylor. I'll see you tonight. Ready to send it? Yes. Oh, I see I have an email for Megan about dinner tonight at Harvest Vine. Hey, Cortana, where is Harvest Vine? Harvest Vine is about two miles away at 2701 East Madison in Seattle. Better get going. Hey, Cortana, open Alexa. Hi there. This is Alexa. How can I help? Get me a ride to Harvest Vine. There is a Uber X two minutes away from your Alexa address. Should I order it? Yes, please. OK, requesting your ride. This may take a few moments. Would you like to continue? Yes. OK, your Uber driver 
Sarah is arriving. Look for a Toyota Camry. What's next? Turn off the lights, please. What else can I help you with? What do you think about Cortana? <laughs> I like Cortana. We both have experience with light rings, although hers is more of a halo. Is there anything else? Now this experience is still in a, cur in a limited beta, but you can go to this website to be notified when we go live. Today, we are incredibly excited to announce two new mixed reality business applications, Microsoft Remote Assist and Microsoft Layout. And these are joining the Microsoft 365 family and available for public preview starting May 22nd. With Microsoft Remote Assist, first-line workers can bring an expert right where they need them, and they can share what they're seeing. This is really important because often they don't have the help they need on site. They can collaborate to solve problems faster using heads-up, hands-free, video calling, image sharing, and mixed reality annotations. And the IT administrators, they can count on secure access, secure communications through Microsoft Teams. And then those experts, they don't have to head out into the field or hop on a plane to solve problems. This really expedites their troubleshooting and it eliminates a ton of travel costs. Now, with Microsoft Layout, teams can experience designs at real-world context. They can share and edit those designs in real time, and they can make better decisions faster. There are a lot of ways to design spaces right now, but it's so hard to visualize them in the real world at size, scale, and context, which means that decisions end up taking a lot longer than they should, and often costly rework is needed. But with Microsoft Layout, teams can make decisions that used to take weeks or months, they can often make them in just days. Dave, what's the latest with the smart building pilot? I've already done some preliminary analysis on the data, and I'm finding some high temperature outliers. We should discuss it later in the meeting. OK, sounds great. OK, that's good to know. I'll follow up with my team and post an update to the channel after the meeting. And I'll follow up and send Yanzi an email about those showcase sensors. OK, that sounds great. Our remote teammate in China can see and hear a translation of this meeting. In fact, we can support multiple simultaneous translations. These are the actual three-dimensional positions of the sensors with the building plan. But let me add a 3D map layer from Bing for additional context. Now, I think the best way to look at spatial data is using my HoloLens, so I'm going to switch devices. Now, I'm going to connect my device to the screen and share my view. Now, let's take the hologram that I'm looking at and place it directly onto the meeting room table. In this way, everyone can get a sense of what I am seeing without having us all to wear HoloLenses. Now, I can clearly see that the three sensors giving us a problem are vertically aligned with one another. Let me just put it back. Tal, have you got any insight as to why these three sensors that are in a vertical stack might be giving us an issue? Dave, there's a hot air duct running from the cafeteria kitchen on the ground floor up to the roof. There were some changes in the kitchen recently. We may be way over spec thermally. Using AI in the cloud, everything we've discussed has now been neatly captured as a searchable transcript on the left. And a summary of all of our meeting items have automatically been created for us on the right. And I'm really pleased to close this keynote by announcing AI for accessibility. This is a grant program that we are creating so that we can give grants to researchers, NGOs, developers, give them support, platform technologies, so that you can bring your ingenuity and passion to help the one plus billion people in this world who have disabilities. I can't wait to see what you all build. Thank you all so very much, and have a fantastic rest of the build. Thank you.